see Jitin Dasji uh, has done several murals and sculpture installations at Parliament House. He is the founder and chairman of JDCA Registered Trust. He is a recipient of several awards and honors like Padma Bhushan by Government of India, Agutkala Award, Order of the Star of Italian Solidarity uh, by Italian President Award and Bharat Nirmal Award and many other awards. He has also published a book to his credit, The Art of Jatin Das. Once I was making a presentation at the Cambridge University to the art history students and I said the pleasure of looking at a painting has been destroyed by the art historians of the West because the moment you say this is Picasso, he's very famous and uh, the size of the painting and the medium used, by then you have lost interest. I think if somebody is reading a poem, it's some essay not even to know his name. If you are looking at a painting, the title and the name is not important at all. And the very pleasure of listening to a poem or looking at a painting was a personal thing. Um, having said that, uh, I think we all have to look within when we're building institutions how we are um, aping and caught in a, in a paradigm which is not akin to our culture. It's like when you have a classroom, the dais is parallel to this, but when you go to a cinema theatre, when you go to Kamani, it's in a semicircular form. Because the voice and the eyes meet if it's in a semicircular form. I've listened to Gadek Badegul Awali Khan as a student in Bombay, where he used to sing for 2,000 people without a microphone and so on. The other thing, when you collect material from the website, one young lady once came to interview me and said, you have had 32 weeks, one man shows. So I said, really? I said, where did you get this information? From the website. Like our secretary said, I've been painting for 20 years. I've been painting for 54 years. I mentioned 53. Okay. So what I'm saying, is what you feed to the website, you get this. A lot of people are collecting information. In my little diminutive house in Nizamuddin, where I lived for 23 years, innumerable poets and writers and painters and architects came. Now there is a divide when you say uh, literature and other arts. It reminded me when I fill up a, a form for travel, it says journalist, politician, etc. and others. We normally fill in the others block. <laughs> so, this is a unique country and that's, this is why the three academies were housed in Rabindra Bhavan, that there will be interaction between all the arts. And this divide, this colonial education system, you know, in art school, if you bring painting, you can't go to the sculpture department. You can't go to the graphics department. The Sir J. J. School of Art, which was founded the very first one during the colonial period, there was uh, painting, sculpture, graphics, craft, teachers training, architecture, and applied art together under one roof. And the government and the other institutions did not follow that paradigm that it should be all together. And not only the visual arts, poetry, painting, music and dance, uh, uh, they're all related and there has to be give and take between all of it. And for everything you need the Sahitya, you need the Chitra, you need uh, uh, Kalatma Bodh. Having said that, um, it's very difficult to go on a, uh, uh, to, to introspect and talk about one's life. In, in my, as I said, in my diminutive house, Mohan Rakesh and, and uh, 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 Arvind Kishan Mehro, Trarun Kolatkar, Dilip Chitre, uh, and innumerable poets have read their poems, and uh, four, five people, six people, we didn't call the press, we didn't call outsiders, and we had a group in Jahangir Art Gallery in Samovar 
on Sundays, all of us used to meet and our Parthva Sarathi will duplicate the points uh, in his college on cycle style machine and distribute amongst us, amongst our eight or ten of us. And uh, uh, today they are the topmost English poets of the country. But, and we discuss each other's work thread there, post two. We, uh, there are literature meet, there are lit fest, there are big art fairs taking place. But no one person is no poet or a writer or a painter meeting each other individually enough as we used to do before. So we are frankly, I've been in this city for 45 years and uh, Nizamuddin was a ghetto of artists. There were writers, poets, painters, architects, dancers, musicians. You name anybody in the country that lived in Nizamuddin, East West and Jalpura. It's almost like uh, dropping names like Hussein and Al Ghazi and uh, Umar Sharma and Bharti Sivaji and uh, everybody that you name, uh, you know, Ramachandran, Parabdi, Sambhu Javari, etc. So that's the kind of premise we all come from and one is very alone today um, and doing one's own work quietly. Uh, since uh, Mr. J told me that I'll read a poem first. Uh, <coughs> I'll read you a poem. Um, it's called Line. A drawing gets drawn by Conti or ink. The drawing draws itself. There is no beginning or end. A line has no history. A line has no length. Only blood flows like a river. The river meets the sea. But a line is never ending. It begins and flows. A drawing is sheer poetry. A poem is night, void without darkness. A line stretches. Thought that never thinks. A drawing has no measure of time. It has to, a drawing is share poetry, a poem is night, void without darkness. A line stretches. Thought that never thinks. A drawing has no measure of time. It has to black though. A line divides spaces, not time. Both time and space can't hold time. A line begins endlessly and gets drawn for no reason. Another poem called Black. For the quiet of the night, I enter the stillness of the dark in search of light. The night engulfs the dark like a shawl. It spreads like ink on wet thoughts. Night defies color. Black on white photo, so powerful. Night seduces the light and conceals it. Quiet the night. Night waits for the light. In the stillness of the night, I wake up to light. Black ink sits on the white paper gracefully. Everything is creative. Everybody has a creative pursuit in their dreams. Different <laughs> kinds of creative pursuits and faculty in our dreams. Uh, but you are good in mathematics and somebody else is very good in music and I'm good in painting. These are inherent inborn qualities. Uh, quite often people ask, when did you decide to be an artist? I never decided to be an artist. I used to draw and paint and I used to play with clay. I used to do gardening and swim in the river and uh, write little poems, listen to music. And that's how the family upbringing as a child. And I think uh, the home is a very important place. Your family, your brothers, your garden your dog, your child, and the river. 
Having said that, uh, you continued working and your path, your lane was opened up to you. And one didn't look back and introspect when you see things that why certain things fell into place. Uh, it is not money, it's not award, it's not name, it's not number of exhibitions or who bought or where you got a commission. Uh, you know, I think poetry and painting and music, these are very personal things. It is not necessary if I paint that I should exhibit at all. Ram Pinkar Bej, who was a great artist of the century, who lived in Shantini Ketan, never had a one-man show. One of the greatest artists of our country. So there are a lot of misnomers. Quite often people ask me, are you still painting? The fact you haven't held an exhibition for a long time. And if I see in my studio, there are about 10, 20 bodies of work that is stored for exposition. Working is one discipline, it's like, it's like publishing books of poems or going to a lit fest and reading your poems. So uh, quite often uh, some people do ask, oh you also write poems. As a matter of fact about 200 painters that I know in the country who write poetry for 50 years or 40 years. Gulam Rasul Santosh was a painter who wrote not only poetry but he wrote all his life. It's like quite often people ask, oh you are also dabbling in sculpture or graphic. So um, a holistic artist, uh, I'm sure in the ancient time also as you all know that a dancer had to know painting, the dancer had to know singing and have to know poetry and so on. So, um, if you do not expose, if you do not bring it to the limelight, uh, to the public domain, uh, they think you are not working. So, uh, working quietly in your studio is a different thing altogether. Then cataloging, photography, framing, exhibition is a very boring affair. It, but in spite of it, one has to exhibit. Mr. Jatindas, before we talk about your art, can you have some visuals? That's a funeral I did in the parliament. Uh, it was inaugurated about 11 years ago. The journey of India, uh, 5,000 years of India from Mohindadara to Bhatma Gandhi, which I took about two and a half years to complete. And it's in the parliament annex in the VIP lounge. It's done in oil on canvas canvas mounted on board. This is the detail of that. And uh, people in the parliament said, why don't you do something after Gandhi? And I said, so there was anything that it didn't touch me, but I thought Gandhi uh, had to talk. And then, you know, so Mohinder to Mahatma Next piece. These are details of the because too small uh, for you to see from there. But next piece. A, a historian uh, uh, narrated the, for 5,000 years of Indian history that I did thousands of sketches. Then you would make a cartoon, meaning an actual size drawing. And then I put them aside and do a mural. Next please. Here's a detail of that. Next please. Next. This is a, a steel sculpture that I did in 1996 in Gulai City. And uh, this is the first uh, steel sculpture that I have done. I, they had invited me to be the chief guest at a function, then they telephoned that why don't you do something for us. They took me around the steel factory and I like a child in a toy shop and I say I'll do a steel sculpture. And quite an indulgence we, you know, we try our things. So uh, then they took me around Then there was a committee we selected a, a roundabout and uh, then all the hoardings, uh, the roundabout was removed. We had a landscape development. There were telescopic cranes and there were 50 welders and engineers and workers worked. And then with this, and you'd be very happy to know, it has been demolished. 
the sculpture has been removed uh, from there because they're doing a flyover, and now it is in the High Court. Uh, the copyright lawyer has taken it up. And this happens all the time in our country. Um, um, uh, there was a sculptor uh, uh, whose sculpture was in the Young Haven, they also demolished. Uh, Shatish Gujral's ceramic at the Omaray Hotel in the lounge is no longer there. And innumerable other artists. You see, we have not created a sense of history in our, at home, in our education. We don't care for nature. And these are man-made man works. If we have no respect for nature, it will come from there too. And we have no sense for, what do you call, um, heirloom and our family, and the innumerable, fantastic uh, uh, big space buildings have been destroyed within within last 50 years, 10 years, and every day some old beautiful period building has been destroyed. And so nobody cares for these things. Next please. This is the process of making. Next please. Oh, sorry. That's a part of the mural, just by mistake. Next please. Next. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. This is, these are three oil murals I have done at NCPGR, National Center for Plant Genome and Research, next to JNU. And S.D. Sharma, the great architect from Chandigarh, designed the whole campus. It's a, it's a very unique institution, it deals with DNA and other things. It's one of the biggest institutions in Asia. And I did three murals and a sculpture and a mobile. And, but I took up the element of DNA. So the whole approach to the mural is different. Every, every time you do a work, you want to have a new experience and when you do a mural, it has to befit the building. These are little terracotta. We have a tradition in our country of lacquer terracotta toys. I studied that and I did some small sculptures um, some 20 years ago. Uh, terracotta, lacquer terracotta sculptures. Next week. These are some pieces that I did at the time. I paint human figures. These are drawings. Drawings with conti on paper. Next piece. These are some early drawings of temple sculptures. This is the JD Center of Art, the land. Uh, we, uh, the government of Orissa have given the land and uh, I have donated, I have a large collection of handicraft, handloom, antiquity, bronzes, etc. for 45 year collection which I have donated. And the government has given the land and B.V. Doshi, the famous architect, has designed it and we are going to build and house 26 permanent galleries. They will be the only center for traditional and contemporary art together. Next please. We had a national sculptor's camp and a potter's camp there many of my friends and this is the only center where traditional and contemporary sculptors and potters came and worked together. Next please. These are all the sculptors. Next please. We also hold a national documentary film festival on art. Uh, every year we have recently we have the seventh film festival on art. It's uh, imaging the arts. It's the documenting. As, uh, we have got many films from Lalit Kala and uh, and Sanitata and elsewhere, the uh, IDNCA. So we have about 2,000 documentaries now in our archive. And painstakingly doing this. Various filmmakers, critics, and artists come there. Very low key, we do not call film stars, it's artists, critics, and filmmakers. <laughs>
Then I have a Pankha collection, the Pankha hand fans, a 27 year old collection. And uh, there's a proposal for the Delhi government to set up a National Pankha Museum. I'm going to donate the collection. Who's uh, exhibited in National Craft Museum here, Victoria Memorial in Calcutta, and then in the Wittberg Museum in Zurich, London Fan Museum, Kuala Lumpur National Museum, etc. Now we are not going to exhibit because they are very fragile objects. They are going to be housed here. I am going to donate the collection to the nation. Next please. These are various exhibition displays. Next please. Next. These are the fans. And many people, many highly educated people in Delhi ask me, is my collection Chinese or Japanese? And I say I have Chinese Japanese, but one of the largest variety in the world is in India.